Okay, in today's video, we are going to be going over basically a problem involving orbital velocity. In a sense, after I set the problem up, you'll be seeing where we're going to calculate the orbital velocity at the surface of the Earth. And we're going to set it up like this. Now, this is a thought experiment, I guess, that Newton did a long time ago. And the idea is this. How fast do you have to shoot something horizontally or project something hor horizontally to get it to go all the way around the Earth? Okay? Now, usually, okay, well, this is the Earth. The Earth is round. Usually, if they see the problem, it says a cannon is placed at the top of the mountain. It's the highest peak on Earth, so that it doesn't, so the cannonball doesn't run into anything. But let's just say we have the Earth here. The Earth is round, and let's just say the Earth is perfectly smooth. Okay, it's a thought experiment. It's perfectly smooth. The cannon is just at the Earth's surface, and the cannonball comes out of the cannon so that it's one meter above the Earth's surface, like that. Okay. So if you shoot now, you can also think about when you throw something. You just throw a ball. Because of gravity, it goes some distance and comes back towards the Earth. Okay. Now, if you could throw the ball harder with a faster initial velocity, guess what? It actually goes a little farther like this. It lands here by B. Now, this, of course, is not to scale. Normally, when you go outside and you throw something, even you shoot a can, you can't necessarily see the curvature of the Earth, but the Earth is curved, and so it goes a little farther along the curvature of the Earth. Now, if you could project something horizontally even faster than you did at A and B, then it would go even farther, right? You throw something harder, it goes farther. Throw something harder, higher initial velocity. It actually goes even farther, lands at C. Now you can do that all the way around here. But at some point, if you throw it fast enough horizontally, you could actually get it because it's still feeling the influence of gravity. We're not talking about the escape velocity yet. We're feeling the influence of gravity. It goes all the way around. It goes all the way around. It's kind of falling all the way toward around the earth, they say. And it comes back to the same place, and you can just like turn around and catch it. If you can throw it with a certain velocity, you would just turn around sometime later and catch it. Okay, and that would be this path D. And basically, since we said the cannon is one meter off the ground, what we're really doing is putting that object into orbit around the Earth. Okay, we have to ignore the atmosphere, of course. We're putting that object around the Earth, so we want to know what in orbit around the Earth. So really what we want to know is what is the orbital velocity one meter above the Earth's surface. So we're going to kind of figure out how fast must you horizontally how fast must you horizontally project an object so it goes all the way around the Earth, comes back to you at this very same place? Okay? Now, this is the equation we use to calculate orbital velocity. I derived this in the previous video, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But this is the equation. It says the velocity is equal to the square root of g times m1 divided by r. g is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared kilogram squared. M1, I could have put Me for the mass of the Earth. M1 is usually the central massive object, and which in this case the thing is that the object is going all the way around, which is the Earth. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Now R is the kind of the interesting thing here. R is not just the height above the Earth, it's not one meter. R, when we use this equation, when we talk about orbital velocities, it's the, it's the um, radius of the Earth plus the height. It's the distance away that the object is from the center of mass or the center of the Earth. Now, the Earth has a certain radius. That radius happens to be 6,371 kilometers. And we just said, for the sake of argument, we're launching it or we're throwing it one meter off the ground. So that means the radius, the total height from the center of the Earth is 6,372 kilometers. Okay? So those are the three values we need to calculate the orbital velocity one meter off the Earth's surface, or how fast we would have to throw something, project something horizontally, so that it comes all the way back. We're just going to plug the values in. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared kilogram squared, gravitational constant. The mass, because the, 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 the constant has kilograms in it, the mass must be in kilograms. It's given kilograms. That's not a problem. But of course, the mass also has meters in it, and the distance R is given in kilometers, so we need to convert. Okay, and 6371 plus 1 is 6372 kilometers, so I just put down here 6372 kilometers, and I tack on a times 10 to the third because one kilometer has a thousand meters. So I just multiply that whole thing times a thousand, you would get 6,372,000 meters. Okay, if you do that math, Oh, I want to point out one thing very carefully, just uh, it's interesting. You'll notice that in this equation, of course, in this equation, there's no term for the mass of the object that we're projecting. Okay, the orbital velocity is independent of the mass of the object. Okay, we talked about that when we derived that equation. 
Okay, it's only really dependent upon the radius, the distance off the Earth's surface. Okay, the greater the radius, the lower the orbital velocity. They're inversely proportional to each other. This is a constant. We're talking about the Earth. You know, this is basically a constant also in this case. So really, all we talk about usually with orbital velocities is changing the height. Okay, so we just do the math, and we get that the velocity would be 7,911 meters per second. And that's 7.91 kilometers per second, which turns out to be 17,696 miles per hour if you're watching in the U.S. or the U.K. All right, so you, that's how fast you'd have to throw something, project something horizontally so that it would basically, as they say, fall all the way around the Earth and continue falling all the way around the Earth and come back to the same place and you could turn around and catch it. Or... What is the orbital velocity of an object one meter above the Earth's surface? Okay, so that's interesting. I think it's interesting. Hopefully you do too. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do all the following four things. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's see. The first thing is subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Uh, you should give me a thumbs up for this video. Why not? It was really good. I think I did a good job. How about a nice positive comment in the comment section below? And then uh, don't forget that sharing is caring. So show your friends that you care about them and share this video with them. They'll be very happy that you did. Okay, thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.